Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining us today is a very special guest. He is the bronze medalist from the 2022 World Championships in the 50 back. He is a three-time Euro Junior champion from these 2022 games in the 50, 100, and 200 back. Uh, he won two more medals with Team Poland at that same games. Today, we are sitting down with Xavier Mashuk. How's it going, man? Great. my first time talking with you. Um, so I'm just excited to hear a little bit about your story. I want to start with these world championships though, in Budapest, um, coming into this meet, did you have any expectations or goals for yourself? Uh, you know, my biggest target was to get in the final. Uh, and, uh, after the 100 back, you know, I, I was, uh, so, uh, so happy about it. So excited because I did it. I was six, so uh, that was amazing. I, I wasn't expecting a medal, so uh, that was a big surprise for me. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the World Champs in Budapest was just like a dream. Yeah. The, so then not only did you get sixth in that 100 back final, um, you were 53-3 out of prelims in the 100 back which was a national record. Uh, you were 52-5 in the semis, obviously another national record. Did you think you, and then in this in the final where you got sixth, as you said, I think you were 52-7, 52-6. Is that right? Yeah, I swam 52.7. Okay. Did you expect, did you think you had a 52-5 swim in you coming into that meet? Yeah, sure, you know. Uh, before the final, uh, I think I was, I was uh, thinking too much about the world, uh, world record, world junior record. And, uh, you know, I burn off uh, uh, during the start. You know, uh, my head uh, wasn't clear, uh, but uh, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it this summer. Uh, I think... Maybe on Euro Champs, on World Junior Champs, I'm, I'm going to, you know, uh, break it because, uh, you know, it's my biggest target in this year. And uh, I, I'm disappointed uh, after the final. Uh, about I'm talking about the time, not about the place. To give our listeners some context, you were 52-57 in the 100 back semis at, at the World Champs. Uh, the World Junior record is 52-53 held by Russia's Clement Kalashnikov. So you were, you were right there. Um, you thought you had that swim though. Um, is there a reason you didn't swim the 200 back at worlds and just did the hundred and the 50? Mm -hmm. uh, me and my coach, uh, you know, we, uh, I wasn't training uh, for 200 back and, uh, we just focused on the sprints, uh, in Budapest, uh, you know, in Otopeni. Uh, as Euro champs, uh, we were, you know, uh, we just uh, were thinking that, you know, I can go uh, for 200 because in Rome I wasn't training uh, for 200 back two. I, I did the gold uh, one year ago. Uh, so, you know, we were thinking, okay, well, let's do this once again. And I did it. <laughs> uh, but in Budapest, you know, I was just focusing on sprints. Gotcha. Makes total sense. Uh, so you, you make that first hundred back final, your first world champ final. Um, again, I don't, sorry, I forgot to mention this. You're 17. When do you turn 18? Uh, in December, 17th December. Okay. So you're, you're still 17 for a while. Um, yeah. which is, is part of kind of what makes your story so remarkable at this point. And then going into that 50 back, um, just what, what kind of confidence were you feeling? Did, did you think you had that potential in you to medal, especially with such a loaded field heading into that final? Yeah. Uh, you know, um, again, my biggest target was to get in the final, uh, 
my coach uh, said to me, if, if you go to the final, I'm going to buy you some uh, Pakuraban stuff. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was my biggest target. Uh, I went to the final with uh, fifth time or sixth time. I don't know. Yes, yeah, sixth time, I think. Uh, so I didn't have uh, as much expectations as, as before the 100 back because at 100 back I went to the final with fourth time. So you know I I was obviously thinking about the medal at 50. I wasn't just expecting that. Uh, and you know I was just before the start I was just thinking to uh, to chill to you know uh, do what I need to do and uh, n- nothing else. Obviously, it's just a 50. It's, you know, it's a super quick race. You're sprinting the whole time. But especially in that final, what are you focusing on race-wise? What are you trying to execute? How, how do you like swimming the 50 back? Uh-huh. Uh, you know, uh, at the start, I wasn't thinking about anything, I think. Oh, it's, it's difficult. To... Oh, wait. Uh, you know, I wasn't thinking about anything because uh, uh, you know I was just thinking about the pool about to uh, keep focus uh, keep chill because you know I, I didn't want to do the same thing as on 100 back when I was thinking too much about everything and then what was the feeling like of of realizing that you won a bronze medal at the world championships I, I can describe it, uh, you know, when I touched the wall, when I saw the, uh, saw the results, uh, that was amazing feeling. Uh, I wasn't expecting it at all, uh, like I said. Uh, you know, I screamed, I, I uh, looked at my coach, my coach was, uh, you know, uh, touching his head, you know, he was screaming too. So that was, that was amazing feeling. Uh, and so let's talk about your coach, uh, and you're training for a while. Um, just how how long have you been in swimming? Well, mm-hmm. I'm training uh, for I think ten years. Uh, I'm training uh, with my coach Pavel since uh, 2019. Uh, I'm training in Warsaw, uh, and uh, you know uh, my coach was uh, training. Uh, Kasper Stokowski before me. So, yeah, he, he's a big name. <laughs> he's a NCAA champion, yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, he, he's one of the best. I think he's one of the best uh, backstroke coaches in the world. That's that's super interesting. So, uh, he trained Kasper Stokowski, who is currently at NC State before, yeah, before you. What makes him such a good coach for backstroke? What do you think he does that works well for you? Yeah, I think he has a, a good plan. He's, uh, you know, uh, so good to to the uh, athletes. He's athletes, yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I, I think, yeah, I, I forgot it. He's training uh, Kaweki too, you know, <laughs> the Kavensky. Okay. So... <laughs> Yeah, he, he's training one of the best uh, backstrokers in the world. Uh, so uh, I think he has a good plan. He's, uh, you know, thinking about the, the training. He's not giving us, a, you know, five kilometers, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but uh, like I said, uh, we, were, we are training a lot of uh, on technique, you know, and uh, I think... Uh, the best thing in him is uh, contact with uh, his swimmers. What do you mean by that? His con- contact with the swimmers? He's so kind to us, you know. He's not screaming on us. Uh, he's not uh, so mean. Uh, he's just so kind and uh, he's worrying about us. He's like a you know, good uncle. <laughs> that sounds really nice. Um, very cool. And so what, what are your sets like, or what's your, what is your training day to day? Like, I know, I think you mentioned five kilometers. Do you do like 5k for a practice? Do you do more? Do you do less? Uh, it depends about the time in the year, you know, in the hardest time we are swimming something about uh, six kilometers. 
and we are doing some uh, pace sets like uh, you know uh, i don't know uh, 10 times 200 on the 2.12 pace on the freestyle i'm thinking about the the backstroke because uh, just one week before the budapest i was doing uh, something like uh, 10 uh, 100s at 1.2 uh, backstroke sets so uh, yeah but um, i think we are doing uh, usually five kilometers yeah uh, we have a lot of difficult training so i can i can't uh, talk about it, the old trainings because you know i think he has uh, more uh, um i don't know how to say it like he can say uh, more about it not me because you know i'm just doing it and uh, <laughs> my coach is uh, better uh, uh, to talk about it and yeah so uh <clears throat> 10 200s before budapest holding 102 backstroke does do you do a lot of your practices long course or short course Long course, you know, I, I love long course. Okay. Uh, 10 200s at 102. How do you feel like that prepares you to swim 100 back or 50 back? Um, you know, uh, I think that that training, especially that training was, uh, uh, this was a training for uh, 200 back, not for the sprints. Uh, but for the sprints, you know, uh, I am usually uh, doing once a week uh, little uh, sprints, like uh, 100 on max, yeah, and uh, 250s on my maximum pace. So I think it's working. <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, li like I said, I think uh, he can talk uh, more about it than me. We'll have to get him on here. In terms of just backstroke technique, is there something that you focus on in training? Is there something that he has helped you get better at throughout your three years with him, just in terms of where you place your hand in the water, how many kicks you're taking off the wall, or your kick during your stroke, anything like that? Mm, you know, uh, in water, I am more swimming... Uh with instinct you know i am not thinking about uh, the kicks i'm not thinking about the uh, the strokes uh, i'm just thinking to swim you know but uh, i think uh, we did a big progress with the starts we did a big progress with the underwater kicks because uh, i think uh, two years ago i wasn't doing uh, uh, first 50 i wasn't doing uh, 5.4 like I did in Budapest. Uh, I was doing something uh, like 6.5. So we did a really huge progress. Uh, but, you know, uh, he, I think uh, we did a huge progress with the, my frequency because, you know, uh, like a few years ago, I was doing like as, as speed frequency as I can. Uh, right now I'm doing like uh, as, as uh, fast frequency as I can, but, uh, you know, the strokes are better, you know, I'm feeling the water from here, uh, and this is going to the, like my legs. Yeah. I'm doing the full stroke, not just a half like before. So I think that was a game changer for the, for the sprints. That sounds like a major efficiency move and something that obviously paid off where, where when, when you're dropping times like 52, five and 24, four. Um, <clears throat> so then, uh, you, you know, moving forward just for your, for some of your goals or goal times that you have in training. I mean, you know, it's like, uh, is 51 in the hundred on your radar now is 23 in the 50 on your radar now. Oh, you know, I, I'm not thinking about it because I don't, I don't want to uh, make a pressure on me. Uh, I just want to have fun just to swim, just to have fun from swimming. 
Uh, and you know, this is my biggest target. This is my biggest goal uh, to still be happy uh, when I'm going to the pool. It's a great goal. And that's a great answer. You know, I um, think a lot of times because, you know, it's uh, too much pressure, I think. That's smart. Dumb people like me think about times. <laughs> and that's why I don't swim because I couldn't handle the pressure of thinking about these times. Um, so in a similar, in that vein, then, uh, heading to world juniors, coming off of the high of world championships, you make your first final, you win your first individual medal. Um, and then you go to Euro, sorry, Euro junior championships, which is obviously a pretty different meet. Um, what was, what was your goal there? Uh, to you know, uh, make as much medals as I can, because uh, you know, with Team Poland, I really want wanted to you know achieve uh, more medals than last year. Last year we achieved twelve. This year we achieved sixteen. Uh, so yeah, so we broke the record because uh, the record was twelve. So sixteen sixteen medals is amazing. Um, and you know, uh, that was my biggest goal and I achieved six medals. So, uh, I think I had a, a big, big opportunity in, uh, you know, get these 16 medals. So you, you got three individual golds and then three relay bronze medals all with team Poland. Um, <clears throat> in terms of those individual performances, uh, you were 24, six in the 50, 52, nine, which is a championship record in the hundred, 156, six in the 200. Um, do, did you have, did you have things you wanted to accomplish in those races just aside from winning? I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was coming there with uh, the first times, uh, in uh, the sprints at 200 back, I had a second time. Uh, in the start list, so I, I was a little worried about it, uh, but uh, you know, uh, I swam, I think I cut out the two seconds from my personal best, so uh, so yeah, but um, I, I really wanted to swim really fast in the relays, you know, the re relays was my biggest goal, because uh, you know, uh, I really wanted to uh, get some dudes uh, from my team, the medals, and we achieved that. So it's amazing. Uh, what what was your favorite race of that meet? I think uh, the most spectacular was the 200 back. Uh, you know, uh, I swam 28, I think, the last 50. Uh, so that was really nice. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think 100 freestyle on the mixed uh, 400 free relay was amazing, you know. I swam uh, next to the David Popovici, and uh, I swam forty-eight point three. So it's amazing time too. I I cut off the two seconds uh, from my personal best. My previous personal best was fifty point zero. Uh, so uh, that, was a, that was an amazing race. Uh, I think it's the third time in uh, Polish history uh, on one hundred three. So maybe, maybe I'm going to break the Polish record. What, what is the Polish record in the 100 freestyle? Uh, you know, I, I don't even know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe something like 48.1. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that sounds right. I, I'm, my guess is it can't be too much faster than that. But uh, yeah, that's 48.3 is a great, great time. I'm pretty sure that would have made our Olympic team or almost made our Olympic team. I mean, that's a, that's really, really fast. Um, and, uh, obviously swimming next to D David probably Whoa. helped. Maybe you caught his wave a little bit. The Polish record is 48.2. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Not too far off then, bud. Um, yeah, it's where work on i don't know maybe maybe your turn or your start like i think you got it <laughs> yeah i think uh i i uh, i need to do the faster turn you know my <laughs> turn on the freestyle my turn is awful <laughs> uh, 
is that just from you not training freestyle very much? Why why is the turn so bad for you? Uh, you know, I'm I'm not training uh, the turn on the freestyle because uh, you know in the backstroke it's really really different because you know you are doing a few strokes and you when you are turning you can't uh, kick yeah with the legs so uh, then you are turning but in freestyle you can do this and you know uh, i'm just not thinking about it and i'm doing i think i'm doing uh, the same uh, flip as in the backstroke you know i'm not i'm not kicking before the wall <laughs> that makes sense to me the, yeah, you're just, you're just carrying over your backstroke speed because obviously those turns work pretty well for you. Uh, I want to go back to that tuner back. You were home in 28. So I, I kind of thought your strategy in the tuner back might be go out really fast and hold on because you have this awesome opening speed and you've been working on your sprints. What was your strategy in the 200 backstroke? You know, uh, I I think we were just I was just I was just uh, you know thinking about to uh, go with the same pace as uh, other guys as Alexander, because Alexander had the best time, has the best PB there, and uh, you know in Rome I I have done the same thing uh, the last fifty. Uh, I'm, you know, just going uh, as fast as I can. You know, the the pain is uh, not a big deal for me. Uh, you know, I think in pain I am swimming even faster. Uh, so, you know, at third uh, fifty, I I started the I started to finishing, yeah. Uh, but at the last fifty, you know, I I went as much as fast as I can. Can you elaborate on that? what you just said it, when you're in pain you swim faster yeah i think so you know i think the pain is not a big deal for me uh, i just need to break this uh, in my head you know when you break it it's you know uh, the pain is nothing that sounds like a champion mindset to me <laughs> uh so i don't know swimmers listening take note so next up on your docket is, are you going to European championships? Yeah. Uh, which is in Rome, which is a pool. At least you've swam one meet there. Is that a pool that you enjoy or you're pretty familiar with? Yeah, I think it's uh, second most beautiful pool in the world after the Budapest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. After, after the Danube. Nice. So what events will you target there? Uh, I think uh, I'm going to do the same thing as in Budapest. I'm going to go with the 50 and 100 back because, uh, you know, uh, the 200 back is uh, so difficult and uh, I can feel pain after after the, the race. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm just doing the sprints there and maybe relax. Okay. And uh, does it excite you to get to race a lot of those really top tier European backstrokers again. I mean, especially after what Thomas uh, from Italy did in Budapest. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm going to get a small branch from Thomas. Maybe we are going to compete together at the same level, but I, I don't, I don't want to say that things, you know, I just want to, you know, I think the medal is my biggest target, but like I said, I don't want to make a pressure on me. Uh, I just want to have fun there and just to swim as fast as I can. Are you going to grow a mustache now? <laughs> uh, I think it's a good plan, but uh, you know, as a 17 years old, I, I don't think I can grow uh, as good mustache as uh, Thomas. But maybe, maybe in a few years, I'm going to do this. All right, we'll we'll keep an eye out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you mentioned. Uh, Kasper Stokowski, who's now at NC State. Did you ever train with Kasper in Poland? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, uh, when Kasper had, had a, uh, some, uh, you know, uh, summer breaks or something like that, he was uh, training with us. So uh, we know each very well. Uh, is, was, you made a verbal commitment in May to go to NC State. Um, are you planning on still 
heading to NC State? Would that be in this fall or in a year from now? Uh, I'm going there in 2024 after the Paris. So okay, yeah, I got gotcha. you. So that's not for a while. <laughs> um, but was he was he part of you going there? Did you go through? Did you look at other schools in the U.S. or was it mostly just NC State? I think, uh, yeah, I was talking with some uh, other schools, uh, but NC State was my uh, biggest target because uh, uh, Casper is there and Casper uh, was talking to me about it uh, and uh, he told me about the, the coach plan, about the Braden. Uh, and, you know, when I met these guys, uh, I just I just love this. Uh, and, you know, uh, I, think, I think it's the best team in the US right now. Uh, we have uh, a huge potential, you know, uh, some good guys are uh, coming there uh, in this fall. Uh, and I think Casper had a really big impact in this because uh, he was talking uh, to me about it a lot. Uh, you know, he was just, uh, when, when we met, I think uh, the first time when he flew there and uh, when he had a first break, you no, know, uh, he just told me, Xavier, you need to go there. You know, it's, it's, it's the best team in the world. You must go there. Have you ever been to the U.S. before? Uh, yeah, like, uh, I think, at the, yeah, at the start of this year, I was uh, in the NC State. Okay. Yeah. So I was there for two days. Nice. So you, you've, you've been to Raleigh. You've seen NC State, um, but you're choosing to uh, not attend until 2024 after the Paris Olympics. Can you just tell me about what went into that decision and why you felt it was best to wait until after these next Olympic Games? Uh, you know, I just really want to swim with my coach, uh, Pavel, because, uh, you know, I love this guy. And I just want to, you know, make him proud at the Olympics. Uh, and, uh, you know, I really want to study in the U.S., but, uh, you know, I, I really uh, want to uh, make Paul famous, maybe, you know. <laughs> uh, and uh, I really want to go there, but uh, Paris is my biggest target. And, uh, you know, we are doing a really good job here. And I don't want to, you know, because uh, it's a really difficult decision to go there. And, uh, you know, yeah, like I said, Paris is my biggest target. And I, I, just, I just want to swim with Pavel here. Absolutely. Totally understandable. Um, well, Xavier, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat. It's been great just getting to know you a little bit, getting to know about your swimming history. Um, is there anything I missed? Do you have any parting thoughts before we sign off today? I don't think so, but maybe you can tag me on Instagram when you when you post this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. You're getting that tag 100%, man. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.